Welcome back to the Gamer's Refuge. Today, we are playing Subnautica. So, it's a uh, game that is still in early access, so they're still developing and adding more stuff. And, uh, and so, so far it's shaping to be a really good game. So, you know, over here is the spaceship that you crash into the planet with. Um, they do have where you can explore it now. So, you, uh, I guess before it wasn't explorable, I didn't get it until the last update hit anyway, so... With a radiation suit, you're able to go in there and explore, otherwise, you know, radiation will damage your health. So, and over here I have the, the little Seamoth mini-sub, which is pretty cool. And it literally runs on battery power. See the little battery right there. <laughs> so, and there's my big sub. I named it Colossus. I'm not sure if that's correct spelling or not, but but anyway, um, I think in game it's actually called the Cyclops. So, yeah, if you're running around in your little sea moth and you start getting low on power, just uh, make sure you have your your Cyclops sub around and you can dock it in the big sub and it will recharge your battery for you otherwise you gotta carry around uh, uh, you know, spare batteries and stuff with you which can be bothersome so well, that's pretty cool and as you can see you know, the cyclops here is a damn big ship, or a damn big sub submarine, rather. So you gotta be really careful, especially when you're in more shallow waters where you take it. So I have to kind of make a big circle here so we don't get caught up on the, the land. I'll go take you over to my first base and show you that real quick. Yeah, the, the graphics on it are, you know, re actually really pretty damn good. Yeah, I was rather kind of surprised with it. Uh, yeah, the one thing about the Cyclops is it, it moves pretty damn slow. So, down there, out of the water, you see my first base, and I just hit something. Also put a, a fabricator. And, oh, I thought I put a storage in there. May have not have. But, and over here, you can name your name your submarine, and you can you know choose the base color and stripe colors. So pretty neat little option. Uh, so you can actually customize how your sub is going to look. Now uh, this was the very first base that I built in the game. It's nothing special. Welcome aboard, Captain. And I had it powered by a solar panel that was originally up and I had a little, a little bit of a landmass that built there with a terraforming gun. And I since made it a, into a nice big piece of land and put my second base. This one I'm probably just going to tear down and scrap because uh, you know, I've already emptied it out. All my machinery's gone, and, you know, fabricators and all that stuff. So to get to the second base I built, I'll come up here, and here's this one, powered by a couple of solar panels, and it's actually out of the water and. On a small piece of land that I built. So, yeah, 
this. Again, you know, it's not real special, but it's a little bit better than the first one built. Got a fabricator there, you know, a couple of lockers there, and a workbench there to improve weapons and such. Okay, you can build a propulsion cannon, fins, you can modify your air tank. I modified it with extra air capacity so I can stay in the water longer. That's why I'm at 105 for my air. And with the, the knives, you can make a heat blade or a diamond blade. Uh, diamond, diamond blade, I guess, is just causes more damage or whatever. It's really sharp. I actually, when I made that, I actually sliced a gash in one of my walls of my base. I don't know if that was a glitch or not, but it's a damn sharp knife. Now, the heat blade, if you make that, you can actually use that on, like, you know, little peepers and the air sacs and all, and it will instantly cook them. So you ain't gotta worry about coming back and cooking and all that, you can just go ahead and eat. Of course, I'm on uh, freedom mode, so I don't have to worry about food and water. So, and this is the upstairs floor, which there's really nothing here. I got, I got some windows, you know, with a good view of the, the shipwreck there. So, and, you know, the outback view. So, uh, I'm probably gonna show you one more thing in this video before I end it, and I'm gonna show you the last base about. Now, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm playing in freedom mode for basically just. You know, just doing crafting for the hell of it. It's, you know, it's not, it's not that I'm playing a serious game or nothing. You know, with with this save, I'm just kind of experimenting around, seeing what I can build and what I can do, and basically getting used to the game. And I'm gonna start a new game here soon, and I'll probably do a series on that. But I'm gonna do it in survival mode, where you have to pay attention to your food and your water. And, uh, basically, you know, make it more challenging. Now, off in the distance, it's amazing you can actually see it from here. But I built my third base way over there, and it's it's a monster. So, go ahead and back out of here. You know, there's the land mass I built and everything. Over here in the third base, which build on, built over in the island biome, which I thought I thought was pretty damn neat. So, uh, yeah, though, those those are kind of cool. They're pretty docile and stuff. But that big old ball in the back of them, if you get too close, they emit a like a poison or something from the back there. So that's pretty much their defense mechanism. But then as long as you don't get too close, they're docile as hell. At least, you know, that's my that's been my experience with them. So um, yeah, I'll probably do a video later on and you know show some of the, the creatures and stuff that are in the water or whatever. There's one creature I don't want to see and that's the Reaper. The thing is Things a nightmare. But I think they got one that's even worse than him. I'm not sure though. But yeah. come out this way. Uh, my graphic settings are set to the the highest possible, which is experimental. So I get the best, I get the best graphics definition I can out of this game. So. And I'm running uh, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX uh, 750 2 gig uh, video card. So, yeah, it's like I said, it's not, you know, it's not the absolute best card on the market, but it's also certainly not the worst. So I get for for what I, for what I want, you know, out of games and stuff, you know, I'm. I'm very satisfied with it. So, 
like I said, the Cyclops is lower than hell. So, just kind of bear with me here. And here it is. The motherfucker of all bases. Hey, you may be... You may be asking the question, did I really build this with materials that I collected myself? I'm going to be totally 100% honest with you, no, I didn't. Now, what I did is employ the use of council commands for materials. Again, like I said, this this was more about seeing, you know, if I could, if I could do it and I could make it structurally sound and all and just, you know, see just what it would look like and, you know, and all that so now the next game I start I will not be using any council commands I will be playing it straight out I normally don't use council commands but considering the amounts of materials that I needed to co construct this and this isn't even the whole thing yet there's still more you know in the back that you haven't seen yet so to you know, but this is by far the biggest part of it you know so yeah, there's, I don't know if there's a way to construct something this big without using council commands and collecting all the stuff yourself or not, I don't know. I guess when I start my survival game, I will find out. I right, said so this is more just to see if I, if I could do it and, you know, seeing what it would look like and whatnot. So like I said, this isn't, you know, a game that I'm you know, all hardcore about, at least not with this save. Now the next next save, you know, when I do the survival game, I'll be all about doing things the right way. You can see I reinforced the living shit out of this. So, and I don't know why the bottom level has water in it. I haven't really figured that out. But, you know, you see a shot of a sub there. And what I did was link four sections together, you know, just for the the gigantic look of it when you first roll up to it, but I also put the, the ladders on alternate sides every time. Because if you put them one, you know, like up and over all the way up, you'll have a hell of a time making your way up because you'll go up or down or whatever, it's just it's really glitchy. So I'm hoping the developers will take care of that with a future update. But so far they've done, you know, I think the developers have done one hell of a job with this game. You know, it's, you know, you know the, under, the underwater parts and all are just really beautiful. You know, they got some very imaginative creatures. You know, some they use a lot of imagination with the different biomes, which, if you're not familiar with this game, a biome is just basically an area, but it has its own, like, little habitat and all that, and, you know, just its own look, so, and, and amazingly, for as far away as we are from the shipwreck, you can still see the shipwreck over there, and, you know, my my second base over there, and even the little escape pod that you crash land in the ocean with. That's right there. So, you know, like I said, the, there's still some glitchiness to the game. So, yeah, this here is the top of what you did see from the outside. And it goes in three sections deep, and up again one more time. There you can see just how massive <laughs> this base is. There's not really a whole health lot in it. Nothing there's a tree that kind of I tried to build through for uh, maybe it'll take it out. Nope, I got a perfect tree in my base, but you can walk right through it. It's not really hurting anything, it's just the tree is glitching through my walls. So like I said, hopefully in future updates, the developers will hopefully take care of that. And I got a little portal there, so we'll come out here. 
Yeah, so. But, oh well. But I just. I built this just for the fun of building it. So. But all know, yeah, this is this is a really cool game. I really like the island biome, even though there's really nothing to do here. There's really nothing you can collect. You can't do nothing with the plants. I think I think this is probably something we're gonna do more with in the future, with future updates and stuff. So you know, hopefully, you know, they can make this area a little bit more interesting. You know, Whatnot. So, but other than that, that's that's it here. There's just like a little lot of pathways and stuff, you know, going around and whatnot. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a quick review, you know, on what I think of this game. Welcome aboard, Captain. And. Oh yeah, through here I forgot. I got a little you know, section in the center here where I got a couple solar panels. And here's my beacon that I, that I named Island so I'd know exactly what this was. Alrighty. My review on this is, you know, it's quite nicely done. Uh, the graphics are really nice. Uh, there seems to be a good bit of detail. The, especially in the aquatic areas, and with the mon you know, the I guess you call them monsters or what what have you. Yeah, you know, it's not as good as some games. You know, with the graphics and all, there are plenty of other games that have far better graphics than Subnautica. But for for what this game is so far, I mean, it's not done being developed yet. They may very well beef up the graphics in a later update. Like I said, this is early access, so you know expect expect bugs and glitches and all that, and you know expect also updates and improvements as we go along. You know, this is, I think, the second early access game I've ever bought, and for an early access game, it is already extremely polished compared to the other one I played, which was Stranded Deep. So, but that's a whole other video in itself. But, yeah, um, as far as gameplay, I mean, this is a survival game. So, you do have some action with certain other creatures trying to attack you, kill you, and all that when you venture in water looking for materials. So you do get, you know, some action in the game. You know, uh, you can find fragments and whatnot, uh, identif ident identify them in a uh, station that I actually have back in my other base. But uh, it's a, a fragment analyzer, I think it's called. But it gives you, like, you know, you know newer, newer technology, stuff that you can build, or improvements for your existing stuff, which is pretty cool. But you gotta kind of look around for the fragments and stuff, you know, here and there. So, I mean, some fragments you'll find a shitload of them, and other fragments you'll search for a long time trying to find even one. So, uh, the the crafting in this game is actually really good. Um, I do like the crafting, although it can be quite bothersome when you're searching for a specific material that you really, really need and the resources seem to be dwindling and not respawning. So, I don't know if the more basic materials like uh, uh, quartz, you know, and uh, uh, salt deposits and all that, I don't know if they re you know, regenerate and restore themselves over time or not, but they, they don't seem to, at least from what I've noticed. So, you know, when you start, you know, when you've collected everything up in an area and all, you gotta start searching new areas that have, you know, more dangerous creatures that are trying to kill you, it can be a little problematic. But therein, that, therein lies the challenge. So, if you like a challenging survival game, 
and all. Uh, th this is actually really, really damn good. So, you know, the controls on it are pretty simple. You know, they're not they're not overly complicated or nothing. So, shouldn't have too much problem, you know, with the controls. As it stands right now, with the glitches and all, it's definitely it's definitely worth the play, especially if you you know really like survival games and you haven't tried this one yet. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It is very water world based. That's majority of the planet is underwater stuff, except for that one little island biome that I showed you. So it's very aquatic, yeah, and all that. Let me take this thing out to deeper water real quick, and I'll show you what the underwater graphics are looking like. Yeah, I'm hitting something. What the hell? Yeah, I do have this on the highest graphics settings. And also, it's a little laggy here and there that I'm running my recording program. So if you're wondering why it's kind of glitching up a little bit here and there, that's why. It may not necessarily do it with your setup, but like I said, I am running a recording program, so that makes it kind of a little more difficult. But I mean, as you can see, you know, the underwater graphics are not bad at all. So. You know, just give you a, you know, a quick idea of what the underwater stuff looks like. So, but yeah, um, yeah, definitely give this a thumbs up uh, for right now with glitches and all. Uh, I put this at about a seven currently. Like I said, if they get some, you know, stuff taken care of and fix some of the glitches and maybe improve on, you know, on uh, some things. If they improve upon some things and whatnot, then uh, yeah, th this could easily be a nine in the future. But yeah, um, I said you know if you haven't given Subnautica a try and you like underwater stuff and survival, then this is probably going to be the game for you. So, but that's all I got for this review. Uh, that's you know this review is just based on solely on my opinion and my you know, my. Uh, play experience with this game thus far so yeah I would uh, say you know get it for yourself and give her a whirl so but anyway um, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate you guys uh, coming to my channel watching my videos you know don't forget to rate this video and leave some comments down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the games.